This episode is brought to you by Akko. It's yes. not just a free show, they get a free beer as well. Fucking hell. Yeah, we you had to pay for business. your beer. <laughs> luckily enough, we've been to two parts of the country now, Bangalore and Bangalore Airport, <laughs> which nice. is it's fucking nice. miles away. <laughs> I also want to point out a little bit like probably chubbing up with the penis. <laughs> fucking, fucking say it in my face, Ben Jud. That's why I think it's so sister fucker. <laughs> we fucked you at the Gabba. Kangaroos, no wonder your dads never came to watch you play. Are you ready, guys? Can we give the great cricketer the biggest round of applause and in true Bangalore style, give them a big round of applause. They've been viral on the internet over the last 18 months and Zian Higgins, say hello, and Sam Perry, the two halves of the great cricketer. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise. You know, it's been a while. We've had two Aussies in a room full of Indians. This is going to be fun. This is going to be plenty of fun. What I heard, they opened up the form and it was in 15 minutes. Over oh, 300 to 500 people who filled up that form. That must feel good. Not really, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Thought it'd be quicker. Yeah, it's disappointing. This is amazing. Uh, we are heavily jet lagged. Uh, we've had a couple of beers, and um, I'm going to forget this in about 10 minutes' time. So um, this is a wild experience. But thank you to everyone that's come to this free show. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was saying, cash in on the Asian century, boys. We're like, well, it's literally a free show. Uh, it's this. not just a free show, they get a free beer as well. Fucking hell. Yeah, we you had to pay for your beer. <laughs> Well, the YouTube analytics were right. It says about 95% blokes. So if you're a woman here, no lines for the bathroom as well. You li he likes that. This guy likes it. Loves lining up to the men's bathroom. <laughs> it's one of his absolute favourite things. Um, well, you've already introduced us, but um, this is, of course... Sam Perry, and uh, according to every YouTube comment, I'm Faf Du Plessis. So, um, okay, if you say so yourself. Has anyone ever told you you look like Faf? Yes, literally yeah. every video. Mm -hmm. Nathan Lyon and Faf Du Plessis with a podcast. Who? <laughs> okay, we're basically here to find out what Ben Stokes means in Hindi. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. Can someone tell me what is what does it mean? How you like voice it? Uh, so there is a curse. In so just so say it. Yeah. Fucking, fucking say it in my face. <laughs> Pardon my French, it basically means sister fucker. But the sound, like the, uh, the mouth shape it makes, Ben Stokes, Ben Chod, that's why I think it is. So sister fucker. <laughs> I'm a fucking guest in this country and you sit in the front row and call me a sister fucker. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? <laughs> I thought it was actually going to be like 65 minutes that bit, but that's okay. <laughs> um... Sister fucker. Wow, okay. Because uh, Coley said that at a training session. They got Coley picked. said a lot of things He's over time. <laughs> Coley said a lot of things. But we won't go there right now. Not yet. Not yet. It's Pez and I's first time to India, and it's uh, obviously a huge privilege. So it's luckily enough we've been to two parts of the country now, Bangalore and Bangalore Airport. <laughs> nice. Which is That's fucking nice. miles away. <laughs> we got here in June, actually, and it's, like, yeah. it's just now... Fuck me. I don't know why I'm so angry about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Why are you angry? <laughs> um, I was doing some research before the show, Pez, about Bangalore. Uh, Bangalore cricketers. That's nice. Really. Bangalore cricketers Topical. stem from Bangalore. That's... that's no. Yeah. K.O. Rahul. Robbie. <laughs> Robbie Utaba. Robbie Utaba. Mayank Agarwal. Uh, Venki Prasad. Venki. Venkatesh Prasad. Venkatesh Prasad was the first interviewee we had that we landed ourselves, not with the help of our sponsor, who we will speak about shortly and are waiting for us to speak about them. The most memorable thing about that interview was that uh, about halfway into it, he asked us whether we, we knew that there was a new ball after 80 overs. And he did it really politely, which was the most alpha thing he could do. Yeah. I'm speaking to the great cricketers. They know about the 80 over. Mm, new ball. But my favourite Ryan Pez from Bangalore, Anil Kumble. <laughs> Oh. It's great to be here and thank you so much for coming out tonight and uh, being such hospitable people. This is, of course, the reason that we're here is obvious, uh, of course, that we're uh, brought to you by Akko. And um, well, let's, let's do a little giveaway. Uh, if someone can name the tagline of uh, what Akko's tagline for supporting TGC is, you get a free year of insurance. So, so who thinks they can do the tagline? 
Should we find someone who can do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's us. Who can do it? Hands up. All right. Hey, this boy. Is that Arsenal? Fucking hell. Who's next? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. I love you. I love you very much. Don't fucking talk. This show is brought to you by Akka. Uh, India's uh, first uh, tech first digital insurance. <laughs> Not bad. Ma'am, because we have no women who come to our shows. Uh, go again, he goes. This episode is brought to you by ACO. India's first digital insurance company. Okay, we're about to lose our sponsor with ACO. Yeah, that's right. Just it's just not working. Know. Now, I thought the fans were here. All right, we're going to go to Arsenal. We're going to go to fucking Bird Camp oh, here. Oh, fucking uh, Jesus right. over here. Yeah, here Jesus won't save you. Yep. Okay, yeah, good one, yeah. This episode is brought to you by ACO. India's tech first insurance company. <laughs> incorrect. Incorrect again. That is correct. It's India's leading tech-first insurance company. Okay, I don't work for ACO, so I don't know whether... Yeah, neither do I. I mean, everyone says such wonderful things about India when they first come here and how nice the people are, and I'd believe that if I didn't have Facebook. Or YouTube. And I've read the comments on, like, any video. Mm. <clears throat> and you guys are fucking, like, you've got some anger. Like, yeah. there's... We thought it might be nice. Yeah, like, like it's all well and good. Like to sit, if you're going to fucking say it. It's all well and good for us to sit here pandering to India saying how great you guys are. But let's look, we have to be fucking honest about what goes on. In the spirit of balance, um, we actually have placed in envelopes under random tables some of the things that are said to us on YouTube. And if you look under your table, you might find an envelope and uh, you might find a number on it as well. And if the man or woman who is holding that roving mic might uh, move around to number one, can number one so put their hand number up? Number one, number one, number, number one, one put your hand up. And, and whoever's at that table is willing to read yeah. to the audience. This guy's um, fucking just wait. Say, he's just wait. To say this. Is he's there itching. a roving mic or must I bring the mic? Who are these two assholes? And WTF, what the fuck is great cricket? Shut your shitty channel, then three shit emojis. <laughs> All right. Fuck your shitty channel. Okay. Number two, let's move the mic, he's number two over here. Number two. Uh, even though this show is free, it's still too expensive for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, they love that. They get a free beer and they love that. Oh, fuck, all right. Number three, who's holding up three? <laughs> this is kind of brutal, but uh, <laughs> what's wrong with the bald guy's eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that got really is. personal, that's... Wrong with it, Please set that up. Okay, number four. Yeah, why would you say that? That's kind of mean. He's over here. He goes, are you jealous you can't wear orange because you're so white? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you are wearing orange, so <laughs> I kind of respect it, if I'm honest. Uh, and yes. Number five, finally. Yes, I am jealous. Uh, fuck you, Aziz. <laughs> we fucked you at the Gabba. Kangaroos, no wonder your dads never came to watch you play. Hey. It's just life as TJC in the, in the jungle of YouTube. That actually was my dad's comment, which hurts the most. <laughs> <laughs> Try to escape it, come to Bangalore, uh, a bit of uh, an escape, you know, a bit of a holiday. Please, this... call, please call me dad. Yeah. Well, yeah, the Gabba, um, the Gabba really kicked things off for us. The, ga the Gabba is what changed uh, everything. Like, it, it, yeah, oh, okay. That is when life for TJC in India started. Like, to paint the picture, it was, it was, it was seismic. I basically, I went round to Higo's house in the morning and, uh, look, the truth is we call where we record the studio, but it's just Higo's house. And we sat on the couch in the morning and we just thought, Australia's going to fucking knock your coats over deluxe. Uh, because the thing you need to... <laughs> Not only knock you over deluxe, deluxe. as well. Don't the thing you've got to understand about the Gabba is that, like, the way the hue of the light bounces off the Australians, you know, with tanned, white skin, the chiseled jaw, mm. Uh, mm. The, the, the bicep of Josh Hazelwood, who can't lift weights popping out just so. A rough, not allowed, not allowed to. A rough crowd drinking 4X beforehand and during. Uh, the, the dark green of the baggy green. Uh, synonymous with, uh, the, you know, the landscape of Australia, dry, arid, harsh. The, the, we don't fucking lose at the Gabba on day five. That was when Cummins and Stark and Hazelwood were meant to do their business. By contrast, there's fucking India. No rig, meek, long sleeves, limp-wristed. Mm. Shubman Gill's face is too clean. <laughs> Shubman Gill's, Shubman Gill is nicking. 
our captain sledging everybody. Uh, and texting. <laughs> oh, fuck, he's not here. Uh, it, was just, it was just one. We'd, uh, okay, cut that bit from the live bit. Uh, <laughs> we'd, like, Shub McGill, face too clean. Washington Sunda, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Shadol Takua, who'd never heard of this coat. T Natarajan, what's that park shit? No, hey, fuck that. Who the fuck's Rahane? Yeah. Like, we don't, we don't who care. Who the fuck's Rahane? Like, Verat's gone home. We yeah. know one guy. We, know we win one that. Player. We win. And that was before 10 o'clock, that conversation between us in the morning, you know? That, w- that was early in hindsight. Uh, that was... But then as the day went on, we learned that Riggs meant nothing. The sun meant nothing. And <laughs> Rishabh Punt smashed Hazelwood down the ground. And uh, we knew, and, and the thing you got to understand about Australia is that, like, we don't give a fuck about anything else happening around the world. Life is about us. Life is about three things. Ponting, Warn, R.I.P., and bushfires. <laughs> but, and your IPL, your fucking IPL or whatever you call it that we cover five times a week. <laughs> Click like and subscribe. That's on when we're asleep. Don't care. But It's we, on the worst, at 12 it's, it's o'clock, the, the game time. starts. Finish it at three. We watch every ball. Of course. Every ball. We watch every ball. Uh, thanks, Wacko. But um, <coughs> India's that tech was first insurance. <laughs> leading uh, fucking something. Can't they do yeah, some shit online yeah, or cricket coaching manual? Uh, <laughs> is that what it is? Uh, but yeah, Australians couldn't ignore the rise of India on that day. That was the day Australians had to take notice of India. We knew intellectually it was all rising up, and there's one point six billion of you, and all that sort of shit. <laughs> But that was a day at the Gabba when Punt smashed Hazelwood down the ground. We were like, it's over. It's fucking over. And that's when the Asian century began. Uh, that's when the Asian century began. Um, so we did what any self-respecting um, millennial does do in such situations. And we recorded something on YouTube. And Higo's made the most valuable swear word uh, he's ever made in his life. And uh, here we are. So that series finished one all, I think, in hindsight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Both teams gave a good go, and uh, yeah, I guess like since then, just from our perspective, to be indulgent, like it's there's been some moments that I think, well, I hope you guys have, have all shared with us in that time. Like, do you remember like immediately after that series, um, England went to India and had a they had a red hot go. <laughs> they tried. And they won best. the first test. They won. The, Joe Root won the first test. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Axar Axar Patel. <laughs> Was selling it some was fucking one of wild the, shit out the back. One of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. And Johnny Bursa goes, I'm going to sweep the fuck out of this bloke. <laughs> and he was out six times in the first two balls. There was a no ball in there. And there was a review. And it just made me so happy. Mm. It was a real kinship between India and Australia that day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Between yeah, that day. That was nice. I suppose finally as well, like, this is probably my favourite moment. Uh, we, like, this was the first time that... Uh, we landed a big Indian player on the show with the help of Akko as well, which was um, Shubman Gill. And just looking at that Gillette shaven face <laughs> down the camera with the beautiful lips and the smile just so. And uh, <laughs> they were like, it was a big deal for us because like you talk to guys in Australia, we can text like, uh, you could probably, like, you know, like if we said to, like, Pat Cummins, like, can you please come on the show or whatever, like, he's been really good to us and he'll get online and he'll, his, his clothes will be messy behind him and it'll just be him, no one's looking after him. You get an Indian player and there's, like, six guys on the call and it's fucking, it's very tightly controlled. And Shubman came on, lovely guy, he was good for us. And, uh, and we were thinking, how, how far should we go with our questions? And uh, I was like, oh, maybe six out of ten. And then he goes, ask Shubman Gill three times about Sarah Tendilka. <laughs> and <laughs> Shubman was really good about it. Like, he, he, he's smart enough to know that he could not say anything in the English language that could be imprinted. But his face was very nodding. And uh, suffice to say, that bit got cut in one second. Uh, that, we, we got a call as soon as that interview finished, just saying, like, the Sara bit's not going to work. Um, so, uh, yeah, one of, the, one of the great moments. Yeah, a lot of people be like, I don't remember that moment. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't remember when that happened. You, you, it... you, know, you really pushed it. You really pushed. <laughs> I just yeah. wanted to know about mm. his private life. Mm. And if Sachin gave him throwdowns in his house. I... Mm. 
That was the question. Does Sachin give you throwdowns? There are so, That's a fair question. There are so many cameras that I can see, but let's tell the story anyway. Yeah. I just wanted to know that if he went round to Sachin's house, did he get throwdowns? <laughs> And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> While saying, give him to me on the full. Yeah. Dude, be cool. <laughs> and then I asked it two more times in different phrasing. Yeah, and it got very awkward. <laughs> Obviously, we found out that we're going to do this show um, like in 2017. So we've had heaps time to prepare. Yeah. I, know, I know exactly what's going to appear behind yeah. <laughs> this screen when I press some buttons. Yeah. I think it's mostly feet pics. <laughs> I you, said you, I think. you would have actually had to slide those, those <laughs> images in. Well, yeah. I've been making multiple presentations I at the moment. I see, so. of course, yeah. Yeah, for Your my only fans. Business. Here we go. Uh, look, yeah, little, look at that, a bit, of, a bit of design there for you guys. Now, it's going to help for the rotation of the uh, like elevation of this move, for everyone to clap when they get that screen. So, hey guys, um, here at TGC's most frightening moments in the Asian century. <laughs> Oh, you take pleasure in our fright, do you? Okay. You fake fucks. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like these, uh, can I just say at the top, he goes, like they, they, these slides aren't necessarily in order, but fuck me, it's hard to go past this. <laughs> in a, this, was, this was the perfect I'm crime. in the way. Here you go over there? Okay, yeah. Like, we, we, we'd, we'd literally never heard of this bloke. Going to the Gabba. So... I thought it was net bowler stuff. I feel like that sort of sets the tone. Who the fuck is this bloke? And, and he played a shot that we had never seen before in the Anglo world. Now you see it all the time, but like that fucking head down shit. And, it, and at this stage it was like 3, 30, 4 o'clock Melbourne time. My yeah. and I watching it, kissing. And <laughs> didn't need to say that, just, just trying some stuff. And light, he hit that. Light petting. He hit, <laughs> it was heavy petting. And then he hit that, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Why is his head staying down? I've never seen that before. And then, wasn't Warren, RIP, on commentary saying, like, Washington Sundar, what a name. And I was like, yeah. the king's right, what yeah. a name. But that's all he could think about at the time. What like, a because name. we were like, we're going to win, we're going to win, we're going to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all, all our commentators could talk about was like, he's got a good name, doesn't he? Like, we were yeah. all in fucking <laughs> shock. The name's good. Washington. Washington, because it's in America. That, that's what we do. We, it, it, it was shock. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, what, what are we talking about? He goes 80, 90 runs in the match and seven wickets, and then a couple of weeks later he announces he's got a dog and he's calling it Gabba. He's quite good looking, Washington, isn't, isn't he? Isn't he? Look at it. Yeah. Do he's good looking? Here we go. And then the family gets involved and it's like... <laughs> Now you're fucking us in the face with your happiness, and yeah. I don't... And w one of the problems is that, like... Tell them, pets. We, well, we love... Like, I've got a dog, and I know you're in the market for a dog. Like, we love pets. That's and we know, and we, and we know, And we know that dogs are better than us. Yeah. But we also know we are their masters. You know, like, like, like they are subservient to us. And he goes and gets a dog and calls it Gabba. He's effectively saying, you are, Gabba is subservient to me. And that is, that, that was big. Yeah, that, yeah. that was a real, that, yeah, as you said, fucked in the face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Just now they're knocking down. the Gabba down as a result of this. Now, sure, it might be a bit of Olympic stuff, like in 2030, but it's mostly because Washington Sunday hit a no-look six, and we're like, well, this stadium is fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> got to rebuild. We can never play. <laughs> We've got to rebuild. Must rebuild. We've got to rebuild. Yep. Start again. We're going to build up. Yep. We're going to start again. Twin Towers. <laughs> So oh. then Washington puts out the tweet, love is a four-legged word. Is it, mate? What about domination is a four-legged word, you know? <laughs> Killing the primacy of cricket in your country is a four-legged word. Yeah. World, meet Gabba. Now, we spoke to uh, Australian captain Pat Cummins, and here's what he had to say about it. Uh, fair play, what can we do? They won the match. I, no, that's like... <laughs> See, what I don't understand here is, like, there were so many clothes <laughs> just yeah. here as well. Uh... Another indication that Australian cricket was dead. Yeah. He knew. He was at the IPL. He knew. He knew. Okay, second one. <laughs> Another piece of masterstroke gaslighting from our new overlords. Uh, so this is obviously when Indian stand-in captain. Did the players favour him? Hmm. <laughs> 
Jinx Rahane presented Nathan Lyon, Gary Lyon, with a, a Guernsey upon his 100th test, just after India had secured a historic victory at the Gabba that killed Australian cricket. If we leave the show tonight and one of you cunts gives me a shirt... <laughs> With like 15 of your mates' friends on the back, I'll probably wear it, I'm not going to lie. But that's not the point. The thing about Rahane is that like he's a... Rahane's understood to be a man of grace, you know, and benevolence and dignity. But like, I don't know if you guys are football fans, but like in 2014 when Germany beat Brazil 7-1 in Brazil, Schweinsteiger did not give Neymar a fucking Guernsey. You know what I mean? Uh... Yuvraj did not give Stuart Broad a Guernsey, but that would have been fucking good. But he was wise enough to do it in front of a billion people. It was one of the most excellent masters. Well, Piers, it got, it got worse from there. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. Oh, this fucking moment. Just popped into the airport for a bit. And, uh, a couple of days later, they had a circuit. They go out, in, uh, go out in, where is it, in Brisbane. Yeah. And then we wake up to this 48 hours later. Oh, there's a kangaroo cake. That's our fucking coat of arms. Our yeah. what of arms? Our coat of arms. And Rahane is given a knife. And it's yeah. fucking mafioso yeah. shit. Just he like, lop, he lops, he lops head the head of our national emblem to celebrate. <laughs> now, so they actually are a pest, so that actually would have been good. That's right, it was actually yeah, quite so. good. That joke's going to kill in Brisbane in a couple of weeks' time, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're a pest, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah they are yeah, a pest, yeah, yeah, yeah in my yeah, fucking yeah. backyard. Um, um, okay. <laughs> Okay, so, this... And, and this was like flow on stuff, wasn't it? He goes yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so we were dealing with the ramifications of the Asian century, Australian cricket being dead, you're our overlords, we're fucking dealing with it, etc. We've got like Rahane presenting the gift to Lion as soon as the game ends. Two days later, he's lopping the head of our kangaroo. Two days after that, just to win the media cycle, this fucking parky is on a, is, is on a chariot in his, home, in his home state. Here we go. Look out, he's fucking beaming there as that well, is isn't he? absolute scenes. <coughs> and we'd never heard of him. Who the... This guy played threes. Okay, first of all, he went missing for like three months after this. <laughs> Look at the fucking scenes of this, okay? Let's just break down this image. Okay. Shirtless blokes playing drums down here. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> blokes in whites at the airport. Just... Mm. Do we know about just turning up at... Has anyone here turned up to their whites at the airport? It's as if, like, you're going to yeah. fucking play. Or, like, Natarajan's coming to town. How are we going to celebrate this? We'll put your whites on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you yeah. obviously get dressed. Has uh, uh, someone got the horses already? Yeah, yeah. Horse, <laughs> horses already there. Yeah. Horses already there. Chariot? Um, yeah. I would have thought so. you got so. two choices. Yeah. Shirtless or whites? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Now, this so, one's more insidious, I suppose, because you guys are all nice to our faces. Again, I've read the YouTube comments. Mm. But this one was a surprising one. Uh, Cameron Grant playing his first ODI. And, and this was like, because we've been going chronologically, but this was earlier in the tour, and this is when Australia should have realised things were about to get fucked up. Because they're playing a couple of warm-up ODIs. Obviously, that, that format's dead now, so it doesn't matter because Ben Stokes retired, so it's dead, apparently. So ODIs um, used to be 50 overs per team. Yeah, yeah that's right. And so then they, England won the yeah. last World Cup, and they stopped playing it. Yeah, that's right. Until next year, I reckon they might play one more. Yeah. They might play one more. That's right. They might play one more 50 over World Cup and then that's fucking it. IPL non-stop. Yep. <laughs> and Cameron Green, you've got to understand, is like, he's the next big hope in Australian cricket. And so this was his debut for the nation. It's not his preferred format. He comes out and he's got this story about his first exchanges on the field playing for Australia. He was against, taken aback. He was taken aback. And this is, this is what happened, right? I was taken aback by how nice Kale Rahul was behind the stumps. He asked me if I was nervous or not, and I just replied saying, obviously a little bit nervous. He was like, yeah, go well, youngster. I thought it would be pretty opposite. The reason why this is genius from Kale Rahul, there's two schools of thought. One, Kale Rahul is just a nice guy. He's just welcoming a guy to the crease, doesn't care, says, welcome to international cricket. Maybe I know you're going to be around for a while, want to get in your good side, but generally just being... Uh, Bangalore's uh, very own Kale Rahul. He's that guy's favourite player. Exactly. Hates Rahul driver, that guy. <laughs> Sorry. I'm... Kale Rahul is a fucking linguistic mastermind because he understands that the language of Australian cricket is hostility only. <laughs> Yeah. 
And Cameron Green is in all sorts. I mean, look at these headlines. 65 media outlets afterwards just going, I thought it would be pretty opposite. I was completely taken aback by one man's politeness. And I think that was a little bit of a, a, a signal, he goes, that things were about to get fucked up and our whole paradigm of success was about to get eradicated just through one man being nice. Because everyone here doesn't know when you walk out to play cricket in Australia. Think of the worst thing that's ever been said to you and there's 11 of your dad saying it to your face. And then Kehal Rahul goes, good luck. What the fuck does that mean? It's fucking Jedi mind trick stuff. Yeah. And then you spend the next mean? 45 what? minutes, yeah. nay, 45 years, yeah. thinking, what did that mean? What did he mean by that? Because apparently, like, also, what by did contrast... That mean? Yeah, by contrast, Coley's at mid-off giving it to him. So yeah. Cameron Green's like, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. That's what I'm I recognise that. That's fine. K.R. Rahul's just like, go well, young sex. I recognise like, that. Fuck yeah. off, now fuck I, off. I've planned for this. Yeah, I know that. That's every game I've ever played since Virat, I was 10. Virat 18 is yeah. fucking hammering me. It's good. And that's why we love Virat, because he speaks our language in Australia. Like, we get it. We're like, okay, you could play if for If Virat played for Australia, he'd be fucking Prime Minister by now, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. I'm not All in right. charge of this. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you guys don't know about this, because it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, okay, cut the camera. Unless you have a VPN well. in China, because yeah. they, this video's popped yeah. up in... Have you seen that, by the way? This isn't a bit, but I'm asking you if you've seen that this is like popped up in Chinese. What, what, what it, like there's Mandarin subtitles, is that what we <laughs> It's really hard to get an IPL interview. Well, like Christo, like, let, can, can we do something? He's like, yep, good. I'm like, can you bring someone along? Maybe an Indian player? He's like, I'll bring Kyle Jamison. He's like, well, I'll take Jamo. No problem. And so we're online, we're, we're chatting with him and like Christo's doing well. Like he's trying to bring a few stories to the show and we're chatting and we're warming up a little bit. And he ends up telling a story about... Uh, you know, and he tells a story for Kyle Jamison, who's probably sitting there going, please don't fucking say this. So every, like, every Kiwi that we've had on, everyone knows that they're so nice, but we know that... <laughs> Skeletons, exactly. Skeletons, everywhere. And, like, just even opening up with Kyle, who we never met before, and he's tall, right? So mm -hmm. what am I going to do, not ask him how tall he is? Yeah, not objectify him for his height. Yeah, what am I, a fucking idiot? Yes. Mm. Set up this whole long thing about how he's done so well in his career and, you know, he's doing really well so far and his IPL's on the horizon. And, and by the way, how tall are you, mate? Six, seven. <laughs> Not really banter going on there, yeah. KJ. Yeah, I didn't like that. No, I'm good. Chris, hey. Christo starts telling this story about how, um, you know, or, or like, you've got to, you know, if you're talking to RCB guys, like, they know a Coley question's coming. Like, you've got to ask about Coley. It, it, it's silly. Like, they'd be very indie not to ask about Coley. Mate, there's a, there's a guy in the front row who's expecting a Coley question on your behalf. I love Coley. Relax. <laughs> yeah, fucking relax, man. I can see you're on the edge of your seat. Just fucking calm but, down. Well, like, I, know about to, I know about to bottle Pez, but just... Verat will score 100 please, again, please, probably. Please, can I just talk... To, can, you, can you unclench your fist yeah. while I tell this? It just... <laughs> please... Uh, this is this just something that happens? We're learning from it. We're exchanging information. It's just a dry spell. A, yeah. you know, He's we, vegan now. We, lo we lost out of this. Virat won. It's okay. Yeah. Anyway. And <laughs> Christo goes on to tell this story while Jamo's sitting there shaking uh, about how, how Virat was like, oh, I'll face you in the nets, you know, before the World Test Championship final, just if you want to bowl the few Jukes balls. And Jamo's like, oh, I don't think I'm going to fucking do that. And uh, next minute, I wake up in the morning and Christo's texted me like four or five times. I won't read it, but it was essentially, please take down that video as a matter of urgency. Uh, <laughs> mine and others' contracts rely on it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're clever, you like that, do you? You like censorship. Okay. And then during the entire World Test Championship final, people were talking about it on commentary. Yeah, and, and Jammo got him out twice, so it was a correct decision for yeah. Jammo to bowl to him. But I think this, the point with this was like, until this point with our frightening moments, like this yeah. was like, this is basically scenarios where like Indians have just been nice and dominated us and we don't understand it. Uh, like presenting gifts and, you know, saying good luck and stuff. This was just a raw exercise of power. Two things could have happened. Virat didn't want to be mocked or Nags was unhappy with our popularity. Uh, <laughs> You can actually trace Virat's slump in form so this to, is, to this the is release of that video. <laughs> that was a bit... So this is Virat's entire career graph, yeah. so, which I made well, paint. I went through every innings, watched yeah. every ball. Yeah, you made that in Excel. I made that, yeah. yeah. This, one, this one was 77 again. Yeah. I've had six Oh, I remember months. that one. Um, uh, and then, yeah. But there's, it, a, there's a bit of a... 
Is it, yeah. It's a bit of a Bitcoin happening. When, when did that... I'm just asking, he goes, just... Yeah. So what... When, what, so that was his last hundred. That's a little while ago. So what are we looking at? Quite, that's it? quite a long time ago. Yeah. When, yeah. Did, that, when did that happen? Uh, just having a look. Yeah. Now. Just if we could just get it there. I'm just more pressing. seamlessness. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. So that's interesting, In, isn't it? That is interesting. The RCB video got taken down, and there's yeah. no hundreds. He averaged 52 here, yep. and fuck all down here. Now, this is probably a personal favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you need... Un- like, look, do, do, do people remember Mo Shammy wearing a towel during the World Test Championship final? All we need to say about that in terms of what frightens us about it is that, like, showers are basically a place of, like... Um, it's a sacred site, symbolically, in Australian cricket. <laughs> it's not and a very religious country, is it? It's we have, not. We have the showers. showers. Showers in the grade scene is, like, really where you make your name and where... Uh, I, 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 <laughs> it's, it is, it's, it's where your status is sealed. It doesn't matter what you do on the field. If you're good in the showers, you're going to be okay at the club. The one thing we had was like one Indians, um, out of dignity and respect, don't really tub that much. And then all of a sudden, Mo Shami's standing on the fucking test match field with a towel over him. And now we knew that we were dead. Like, truly. Look at, have a, have a, look at him, he's fucking on the field. Look at this. I also want to point out a little bit like probably chubbing up with the penis. <laughs> With the penis is what I just said. <laughs> How do you chub up? Oh, with the penis. But like, England, I've never yeah. been, I've never been cold, and I'm like, oh, geez, the, geez, the tummy could use a bit more. Yeah. You know what? I'm a bit cold. Can someone bring me out a thin cotton towel? I might <laughs> just it, put that around me. <laughs> is that Egyptian cotton? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, finally, the last one, last most frightening moment. Shout out to the nine-year-olds that got in. Do you, want to set, um, do you want to set this up? So this is Bradman's 100th 100. And he did it at the SCG in 2006, I want to say. <laughs> Bradman, I'm not, I'm Brad- not great. It was pre-pandemic, so I sort of lose track of time a bit, if I'm honest. Um, how's Brad- the Brad- fucking salad on Keith Miller? Yeah. Jesus Christ, are you kidding me? Yeah. Anyway. So, so this let's... Because Bradman was the greatest ever. We get a yeah. lot of pride and... And he's, he's playing against India, so I should have said. Yeah. Now, I just want to say how he brings up his 100th 100. I just want you to keep an eye on the bowler when that happens. And, and, the, and the standard of bowling? Just watch the bowler. Just watch him. <laughs> yeah. What's he yeah. doing? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, that's what Bradman had to compete against. Well, we, we built a national mythology over Bradman batting in a business suit against that shit. Yeah. Seriously. And that... To us, that's what India was pre... Gabba, like that's yeah. what we had to compete against. Some fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Should I do it again? No, okay. It was too good the first time. Um, so that's that was Bradman, and Bradman was like, "Well, he's, he's, he's the best, right?" He's... Don't you fuck? How? Are you fucking? Are you disagreeing better, with that? Who's better than fucking Sir Don- fucking Donald, Donald Bradman? I'll fucking fight everyone in this in this fucking. <laughs> fuck is it, mate? Everyone's dead here. Uh, fuck, fuck you guys! Uh-huh. A disrespect to a free show <laughs> with a free beer. Sachin was pretty good. Sachin was good. Bradman said, "Yeah, he reminds but me Bradman of me." But Bradman was Bradman was twice as good. Yeah, come on, <laughs> fucking hell. Did you say Watson? <laughs> hey. Oh, hey, Was- good play. Was- you said Washington. Oh, Washington. Oh, Washington. Oh, Washington. Oh, sorry. Of course, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Washington still does better than sorry. just That's uh, actually, Donald Bradman. Yeah, people okay. do compare that a lot. I said that on Twitter. Washington, Sundar, or Sir Donald Bradman. Yeah. And Who now- would you rather? Yeah. Anyway, fuck you, throw me there with that. That's, yeah. yeah. You've absolutely done me. Well played. Asian century stuff. So that's what Bradman played against. So Bradman was like the best, right? Mm. Just fucking, yeah, you Agreed. guys. Agreed, fucking yeah. hell. Just Show give some me respect. something. This is all, Bradman's dead. It's all we have. <laughs> Fuck, they don't want to give it, do they? Fuck yeah, me. Just, how can you not want to give us Brad? <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> anyway, so um, Clary Grimmett got uh, Bradman out 10 times. So Bradman, like, as we've just all agreed Here within this room. Is it, um, Bradman was the best. Clary Grimmett got him out ten times. Here's how he bowled. (laughs) 
Bradman was a good player. It was quick on his he feet. He was good. He was good. He got to the pitch. He was good. Look at it. Yep. That that got Bradman out ten ten times. Yeah. Ten he got, times. Nobody got Bradman out more than that. No, nah, no one. Bradman was the best. Bradman was the best ever. He was the. <laughs> was the best to ever play the game, and he was that the best. that guy bowls in a cap. Yeah. And he's in some sort of detention centre. <laughs> That's right. He's very roped in. Uh, yeah, oh, detention centre stuff. Anyway, so in our world... We're, we're trying to make sense of this, right? So we're, like, we're trying to apply it to modern standards. And a couple of years ago, uh, a guy you might have heard of who plays for Australia called Steve Smith had a pretty good series against England. And no, he scores Pez, runs in India. Because they won't know who he is. He used to play for Rajasthan. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And Delhi when he got a game <laughs> under Ricky Ponting. <laughs> so we, we were trying to make sense of that like because a lot of people at the time were saying Smith is the best since Bradman. Yeah, because when we spoke to him, which we were about to see, this was like six minutes after the 2019 Ashes where it was like, in Australia, we were like, fuck, this is, this is the best since Washington Sunda. <laughs> and so we, we, we put it to him. Okay, so um, Clary Grimmett was a guy who got Bradman out ten times. And uh, Sam and I here at The Great Cricketer, we, um, we decided to go through Clary Grimmett and how, how good a bowler he was. We got Bradman out 10 times, must be pretty good. Quickest so, to 100 wickets. Quickest to 100 wickets, yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to show you Clary Grimmett here bowling. Uh, if you just play <laughs> he the, got Bradman uh, out 10 times. He got Bradman out 10 times. <clears throat> <laughs> good use of the front arm. Yeah. <laughs> good bowler. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How do you reckon you would have gone facing that? Hopefully, hopefully smack it everywhere. <laughs> Jeez, it looks like he lobbed a few out there. I don't know. <clears throat> he got broken out ten times. He got broken out ten times. So right. I've got out to good. Dean Elgar twice too. <laughs> <laughs> now this is what we're competing with now. A little bit inside out, if I'm honest. Yeah, but that's right. Um, this child has a better technique than 75% of first class cricketers in Australia, uh, who play professionally now. I mean, it's not going to stop me from. Uh, I guess analysing him, he's a little bit out in front on the forward defence uh, and uh, that, that back leg doesn't need to drop when he's cover driving but uh, off the pads it's pretty good and yeah, it's, uh, it, I think he'd go pretty well against Clary Grimmett. <laughs> now we did some research into this guy and he's actually 27 so it's actually a bit of a, not nearly as good as what you think. Despite the entire high point of this evening not working, <laughs> that's our scariest moments of the Asian century. Thank you. Thus far. <laughs>